to run an Energy Plus simulation, first open EP Launch and navigate using this dialog box to your IDF file. It also wants a weather file as an input, so you can browse to your EPW file. In this case, I'm going to use the Oakland International Airport as the closest file to Berkeley. And that's really it, and then press Simulate down here. And as this simulates, you'll see you get a dialog box opens, and it goes through every month of the year. In this case, it's a very simple model, so it's going very quickly. Um, I expect yours might take a little bit more time although you probably are using faster computer than mine. So on the whole, it should take anywhere between 10 and 30 seconds. For very large models, it can take up to 20 minutes or so to do uh, one of these simulations, but these are not large models. So it's also extremely important when you get this dialog box to read it carefully and make sure that it ran as you expected it to run. So it tells you the two input files here, the internal loads.idf and the weather file. And then it says run complete, energy, com energy plus completed successfully, one warning, zero severe errors, lapse time 12 seconds. So the first thing you should do is jump for joy because you have zero severe errors. That's wonderful and it's cause for celebration. Um, the one warning is something to uh, look out for and, well, any number of warnings. And I'll show you how to check what the warnings are. So I'm gonna press OK to get rid of that dialog box. And then this uh, uh, EP launch um, interface will then populate the results down here. And probably as a default, it looks like this um, with the sets tab open. But if you go to all, you can see all of these. And this errors button is the one that you want to look at in order to see what your warnings or severe errors are. So what this says is, and by the way, these are usually written in pretty good English. So if you read it, try, try reading it and see what you can tell from it. Sometimes it's hard to know. And if you've got uh, questions, feel free to email what this says is uh, the version and then testing the branch integrity, all branches passed, testing individual supply error. Remember, this is a, a z mixed air zone model, so it's making sure that it finds a volume of air. Um, all supply air paths uh, passed, um, all return air paths passed, no node connection errors were found. Woohoo! And then it's beginning the simulation. And the warning we're getting here is determine polygon overlap. Too many figures greater than 15,000 detected in overlap calculation. Use the output diagnostics display extra warnings for more details. If I wanted to, or if you wanted to, go and figure out more about this error, you could um, uh, Google it. You could go to the Unmet Hours um, website and look up for help or you could look in the input-output reference for uh, help on that. These are the, the three best ways of looking at errors. Most of the time, Google searches don't come up very well. You can also troubleshoot this through Energy Plus by using this output diagnostics display extra warnings. Now, this is a, a common thing to get when you have a lot of context shade. And in this case, we've got a lot of louvers on our Worcester Hall model that are overlapping. And that's why we're getting the, the error. And this should run OK even, even with this error. So it also says here there are 18 unused schedules in the input. That's fine. It just means all those extra schedules for uh, schools, offices, residential, uh, and hotel are not being used. You can also use the output diagnostics display unused schedules to see them if you want. Um, and then it gives you a summary of your warnings and errors. So this is good. One warning is fine. Probably you'll also get another warning that says that your, your weather data was taken at a place uh, that it didn't expect or something to that effect. And that's also going to be fine because as you run it with different, different weather, it's going to, um, the, the, the program won't know exactly where it is until you run the, the climate file. And that's fine. It, it still works just fine. So generally speaking, the warnings are not super critical, as in it won't cause your results to fail. If you get a severe error, though, it will look like the run ran successfully, 
uh, but a severe error means that it didn't. So you can't trust those results. Okay, uh, another thing I wanted to mention about errors. Errors are your friends. Errors are like a trusted advisor coming back and saying, hey, look, you, you probably input this wrong. And I want to underline that this is something you should look forward to, not uh, something you should dread. Because what, it's, what it is, it's like someone trying to help you out. And you should think of it that way. If you just returned a severe error um, and it failed without knowing why, that's kind of useless. But having this um, tell you what's going on and, and how to start to think about correcting it is really, really helpful. And it's actually one of the few good simulation programs that does this well. Okay, so now we've got a few other tabs here. And the, the two the important ones that we're going to use in this class are these tables and variables. The tables file will open an Excel file with uh, a summary of all of your uh, inputs and outputs. And what I'd like you to do is copy this using this um, A1 sort of corner copy key and then control C and then going to your dashboard and in the table tab copying this file right in there and that will update this end use summary. In fact that is the only thing that is linked to that table file is this end use summary. You can see here there's also a variables file uh, uh, tab and the um, there's a also coincidentally a variables results here and these variables results are are the more detailed results from the run and you can see that there's 8760 rows with with one header so 8760 80 set 80 Seven six eighty six seventy eighty seven sixty one rows, and I want to copy those to my dashboard in the variables. And when I do that, all of the other spreadsheets will update. So the year spreadsheet, the week spreadsheet, the renewable spreadsheet, the energy use spreadsheet are all tied to that, and and the viz panel are all tied to the variables. So variables and table are the two inputs that you need to copy in. And really, I'd like you to look at some of the variables and sort of inspect them as you go this week. But the key one for this week is going to be this table file, because we're going to be using this end use summary to, um, to do a comparison of, of different schemes relatively quickly. Um, something else I should note, and this is also true in previous versions of the templates I've given you, make sure that the yellow highlighted text matches the text next to it. So this end uses by subcategory should match this, and heating, cooling, lighting, and equipment should match heating, cooling, lighting, and equipment. If these don't match, then probably you pasted the wrong thing into the table, or you um, somehow screwed up the run. So try it again uh, if they don't match. Um, it's also possible that you may have messed up something in the dashboard itself, in which case it might be a good idea to re-download the, the dashboard from the class folder and try it again. Um, but all of this is kind of programmed with a um, formula. You can see the formula is up here to try to make sure that, um, that, that the, correct, the correct values for um, electricity, cooling, and heating are populated right in this row or column right here. When you do get this column here, when that's populated, you can press Control C, and it says it right here. Copy this column to the bottom of the input output summary. Go to the input output summary, and down here, if they, if say this is my baseline run you can copy it. Now, again, it's important to copy with your, with the, um, uh, but copy the values only, not the formula. So right click and then this values um, will, 
And this will, or at least it should, um, populate this graph. I think the reason that it's not populating it is because in this formula down here, it's looking for a value that we haven't entered. So if I go up to the top, yeah, it's dividing by the analysis zone um, area, and we haven't entered that in this spreadsheet. In my example, it's entered. So I'm going to put here 149 as my analysis zone area, and now, and now it uh, populates the um, end uses for this baseline case. So as we change the case um, and copy new files into the table tab, then the end use will update. You can copy this over to the input output summary and go on your merry way.